Hello, this video shows a demo of how to use Excel spreadsheet to perform a multiple regression. I'll additionally show how to calculate and interpret the major descriptive statistics found in the regression output. Now we're going to base the analysis on this three variable model in which y, the dependent variable, is regressed against two independent variables x1 and x2. So here we go. So here's our data on spreadsheet. In this example we're going to be regressing shipping cost per unit against distance in miles x1 and number of items in a package. So we're going to go to data and then to data analysis and then let's scroll down to regression click on regression and OK and for Y range we click on this and drop it down highlighting all the values and for X range we go up here highlight these two together alright so this tells you that for as many number of independent variables you have they all have to be placed next to each other there cannot be empty columns and spaces in between the data set containing your independent variables. So here I have two and they are placed side by side. If I, if I had three then I would have placed them x1, x2 and the third column would have been x3 and so forth. Y can be anywhere since it's a unique column right here. So click on labels and click confidence level and for fun I'm just gonna make this 99 percent meaning I'm gonna be testing at the 1 percent level and then I'm going to check residuals because I do want to see the residual output and then go back here and uh, click on output range and click in here while my cursor is blinking there go somewhere on the body of the spreadsheet like here and dump your data by clicking OK and ladies and gentlemen voila that's what you get going right here and right below it is your residual outputs which for good measure includes the predicted values of y as you can see right down here but going back up here I've format I already did it and formatted the data nicely for you you can see it right here so first thing determine if the regression as a whole this model is statistically significant and the answer is yes because look at this f value of 14.47 look at the corresponding p value which is less than one percent and certainly less than the five percent uh, level of significance so this tells us that we reject the null hypothesis of no regression between y and jointly with x1 and x2 and accept the alternative hypothesis that indeed there is a regression relationship between Y and together with X1 and X2 combined. Having confirmed that a regression relationship exists, we can now proceed to determine uh, to what extent the individual variables contribute information in the prediction of Y. Now for that we look at their coefficients. We look at the coefficient for x1 which comes out to be 1.2125 so that's our estimate for b1 right here beta 1 and also look at the coefficient for b2 which is a negative 0.5673 and that's our estimate our estimate for beta 2 right there and we can see that the t statistics which are 4.673 and negative 2.4556 respectively are all statistically significant. B1 is significant to the 1% level and B2 is significant to the 5% level. Keep in mind that the T statistics are calculated to be equal to the coefficient divided by the standard error. So this value that you see here is, I'm going to come out here, is equal to the coefficient value of 1.2125 divided by the corresponding standard error of 0.2595 and that's how you get this 4.67 right here. And in the same vein, if we divide this coefficient value for B2 by the corresponding standard error, we find this T value right here. Now then, what you see right here 
is the 95% prediction interval for the mean value of y where x1 and x2 are 0. So this is the lower limit and the upper limit. And this is the 99% prediction interval. Again, for the mean value of y where x1 and x2 are both 0. They don't really count so much in a regression analysis, quite frankly. You, we might be interested, though, in looking at the 95% confidence interval for B1. This is the lower limit and the upper limit. And for B2, this is the lower limit and the upper limit. And also, the second uh, set of numbers are going to be the 99% confidence level for B1 and for B2. Now then, going right back here to the ANOVA table for the regression, we find the two measures of variation, regression and residual. Regression is the variation that has been explained by this analysis we've conducted. And residual, which is also error, is the unexplained variation, which is what is left unexplained by the relationship between y and jointly with x1 and x2. Now, the degrees of freedom for regression is k minus 1 which is k is the number of parameters being estimated and that they're going to be b1, b0, b1 and b2. So there's three of them. So 3 minus 2, sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2. And for error is going to be n minus k degrees of freedom where n is a sample size of 20 and again k is 3. So 20 minus 3, that's how we get 17. And as is always the case, total degrees of freedom is always going to be n minus 1, which is sample size minus 1. 20 minus 1 gives us 19. Now, the basic measure of explained variation is sum of squares regression. If we divide sum of squares regression by its degrees of freedom of 2, we're going to find mean square regression. And so if I come out here and I hit equal, this sum of squares regression divided by 2, that's how we get this guy right here. And for unexplained variation, which is the basic measure of it, is sum of squares error, which you see right here. If we divide sum of squares error by its degrees of freedom of 17, we're going to get mean square error. So if I sit out here and I hit equal and I click on sum of squares error and divide that by 17, uh, we're going to get 45.84 approximately. That's it right there. Now then, the final measure of unexplained variation is standard error of the estimate, which really, this mean square error is a variance measure. This sum of squares error is just the difference, the square difference, as I'm going to show you shortly. And when you average it out by dividing it by the degrees of freedom of 17, you get a variance measure because variance is the numerator variation, the square difference, averaged out by dividing by the degrees of freedom, in this, in this case, 17. Now, when you take the square root of the variance, you find you get standard deviation or standard error as the name goes right here. So if I sit out here and I hit S equal SQRT, which is the square root function, and I click on this mean square error, that's how I get my standard error of the estimate. So sum of squares error, mean square error and, and uh, standard error of the estimate. These are build up measure, built up measures of, of unexplained variation. So let me delete all of these things here so our spreadsheet can look clean. And then of course when you divide the uh, mean square regression which is the measure of, unex of explained variation by mean square error, the measure of unexplained variation, you find the F statistic. So right there, equal mean square regression divided by mean square error. And that's how we get the F value of 14.47 approximately. So now, this measure of, this basic measure of uh, explained variation sum of squares regression is actually based on the square difference between y hat and the mean value of y, as I show here. y hat is your prediction equation, which is your the regression model. 
So the regression model, which is the prediction equation, is the predicted value is a is a, a construct of the predicted values of y, which you get when you check the residuals outputs, and is so calculated. So this tells us that to calculate sum of squares regression, we need first to calculate y hat. So if I were to come out here and I write y hat, all right, looking at this definition right here, it's going to be equal to the intercept value b0 plus open parenthesis is going to be b1 times x1. This is my b1 multiplied by x1. I'm going to go upstairs right here and click on the first value of x1. You can see my work up there and I close parenthesis as you can see me do up there. And if I scroll back down so you can see the main work plus open parenthesis, it's going to be b2 and this is my b2 right here multiplied by the corresponding first value of x2 right there and I'm gonna close my parenthesis right there and which if I scroll down you see my complete work right here and I hit enter so and I can now just go ahead and copy down so but before I do so I'm gonna hit the function key F2 to reveal my calculation input my b0 should be fixed and you fix your cells making them permanent by hitting the function key F4 when your cursor is blinking over it. Function key F4 this is my B1 function key F4 and this is my B2 alright click on it function key F4 and so now having made these coefficient values permanent so they cannot move around I hit enter and then I copy down and when I copy down, you see indeed that my predicted values of y come out to be exactly what Excel gives you. All right, so that's the calculus behind it. So now, with that, we can calculate our sum of squares re uh, regression. But first, make sure you have your y, ha y bar, which is your sample mean of y. I already did that right here. It's 30.10. And all I did was to use the average function. Oops right the average function just before I finish typing in get the um, function right there so highlight all of these guys right here and close parenthesis and that's how I got 30.10 so now with that in place I come out here equal open parenthesis y hats which is this guy right here minus y bar the sample mean of y which is this right here and go back up here so we can see the work close parenthesis hat 2 to square it all right we got to square because it's sum of squared residuals so we square it and then I copy down but not before I hit function key F2 to edit and click over cell B68 which contains the sample mean to make it permanent and then I copy down so this is my sum of squares residuals sorry my sum of squares uh, regression my SSR and if I come down here and I sum them all right that if I sum those values this is sum of, of the squared resi uh, regression values 13,000 and 26.54 and if I go here to the regression output that's what you see right there next up sum of squared uh, some of the squared errors so right here some of the squared errors uh, let's get rid of this by the way we don't need that anymore so that's gonna be y minus y hat so if I come out here equal this is my y value which I kind of reference from the top all right, so I wouldn't have to be dragging back and forth, clicking on it right up there. So back over here. So it's going to be y minus y hat. All right, and my y hat is, of course, the predicted values right there. Square it. And um, copy down. All right, N nothing needs to be made permanent. So I'll just copy down. And after I copy down, I sum them up.
and that's going to give me 779.26 and if I scroll back up here you see it right there and of course if you add up these two guys you get some squares total so that's basically it um, the measure of goodness of fit is r square r square is the coefficient of determination and measures the proportion of the variation in y that has been explained by the regression on x1 and x2 combined and this and it tells us that approximately 63 percent of the variation in y has been explained by this regression now this r square is calculated simply as equal to sum of squares residual sum of squares regression divided by sum of squares total because it's a proportional value all right the portion of the total that has been explained and that's it 63 percent of the total variation careful sometimes when people look at look at a regression output they tend to be more enamored by r square the larger the r square the happier they are but r square is a descriptive statistic it is not a measure of significance the measure of significance based upon which you accept or reject the regression hypothesis is f statistic if f is significant good r is only descriptive statistic yes the larger this value is the happier we should be that a great deal of the regression a great deal of the variation in y has been explained however it does not stand in place of what f tells us which is that there is or there is not a regression relationship between y and the independent variables we can say however that if the regression is significant and r square is sufficiently high then we will achieve will be able to use the regression model to achieve a higher degree of prediction and i'm going to explain that in the next video that shows how to utilize regression results to make predictions of values